course, the difference between both blending modes or b both blending ways. The mix two colors doesn't have all the blending options that are found inside the traditional layering, especially the overlay and uh, blend mode. That's all right for us because most of the time these modes are not used when you're dealing with texturing inside of Softimage. So, the next question is where do we pipe those blending nodes if we were to control the reflection? If we were to pipe this blending node to the reflection color, it won't do, it won't do us any good as we'll only be controlling the blending of the reflection color. In order to control how exactly the reflection gets layered on top of the diffuse port, we need to be we need to apply the reflection directly on the diffuse port. This will give us all the control we need plus other few bonuses as well. So let's see how we to do that. First, we'll remove the reflection from the MIA material. We'll take this back to zero. And let's see how this looks. We'll take the color back to the diffuse value. Let's do a test render. Let's see how this looks. All right, so we want to have the reflection on the diffuse port. So the first thing we'll do is add a mix to color to the diffuse port. Diffuse to colors has two values. We have the base color and we have the mix layer, which is the layer on top. We'll add the color of the grid to our base color. And for now, let's take this weight down to zero. Nothing happened, still the same. If we increase our reflection, still having the same effect. So, in order to change the reflection, what we need to be doing is have a reflection blended with the base color here. And for that to happen, we need to resort to a blend to an illumination model. Let's bring another architectural material here. So, if we add this to the color one, increase the weight, first thing you'll notice is that the color from the diffuse is being replaced. So the first thing we'll do is change our mixing mode to screen. Right. But now the overall color is washed out because the diffuse value of the architectural node is gray. Let's take this down to black so we only have the reflection colors. Alright, so we do have a bit of coloring. This does resemble a little bit the color of the lighting plate that we have. But you'll notice that the reflection is turned down. If we increase this, make it white, the reflection will increase. But the 
overall reflection as well that increased because this white color is being brought in to the mix. In order to better investigate this, let's connect this architectural material directly to the material node and see how this looks. If we take this down to black, well, we're still having the same problem. Problem is Mentary is still using an overlay mode to overlay the reflections on top of the black colors. So all our colors are tinted black. In order to overcome this problem, we need to find a node that removes the diffuse value from the equation. Not simply putting it to black, but completely removes it from the equation. Unfortunately, architectural materials don't have this option, and the only shading models that do have this capability are the traditional ones, like Lambert, Fong, Blinn. So, let's bring, bring a Lambert shader, pipe this to the color one, and remove this. But first, let's see what kind of a reflection we'll get from a Lambert node like this. If you remove now the diffuse value of the Lambert, our material will look black. But if we increase the reflection color to 1, you can see now how our material is only showing the reflection and nothing else. This works better for us, and if you have a look at the overall effect, so our reflection right now looks a lot more believable and realistic on the ceramic floor. We can clearly see how the red ball is being reflected red and how the tinted yellow lighting panel is showing through. For us this means that we have to do a lot of the work that was given to us for free in the MIA material because we're using a node that is not an architectural node. Namely we'll have to implement our own Fresnel effect and also deal with diffused reflection. So let's start by bringing, bringing the Fresnel effect back in. There are many ways to implement a Fresnel effect. I use the system for so many years now. It does offer me the best flexibility and control over any other method. We'll start off by bringing a gradient mixer node and an incidence shader. Now by default the incidence shader basically we'll pipe this here to the surface shadow on photon. Alright, so the incidence shader tells Manta Ray to give two values based on the surface to camera angle. The default one will where there's a perpendicular camera the light will be black and when you're looking straight on to the surface it's white. You can invert the effect of course and control it through bias and gain But a better method of doing this is piping the incidence to the gradient. 
So if we take the incidence and pop it inside the input value of the gradient, make two colors. We are only interested in those two colors. And let's have, let's give it a phone on, so delete unused. Let's have a look at the effect right now. So the current effect is, I'll take this back to normal. So this gives exactly the same effect of incidence with the added control that we can move things around visually. And we can control how the curve is.